so this research um, really actually goes back to the 1990s, which um, is the time that I did my doctorate. And there was a subject called supply chain management that had just started to emerge in the 1980s. And I was given a research grant by UK Research Council because what I was intrigued with was that the people who were writing about supply chain management seemed to be writing about different things. So I used this research grant to go around the world, great, to go visit all these different research teams. And I visited you know, people like Bud Lalonde in Ohio, who had a, a young doctoral student called Lisa Elram working with him, who I interviewed as a doctoral student. And people like Bill Berry, and so a lot of American universities, and then there was some Richard Lamming working and such. So it was a, a void of discovery. And what I discovered was that there were different research groups working on supply chain management, and they were all referring to different things. And the way that I was thinking about it, it seemed logical to um, structure it at systems level. So some people were talking about what went on inside an organization. Some were talking about the relationship with the supplier. Some were talking about the physical supply chain logistics. And I was part of a, a number of people thinking about networks of supply. So I started thinking about connectedness. What we were all talking about were connect, connections between organizations. Uh, but also happening at different systems levels. So actually, I've pretty much been on this ever since, since the 1990s. So this essay really is looking right the way back to stuff that I've been thinking about since then. And then working in healthcare supply networks and systems for most of my career and working in that complexity, this is really sort of the underpinning for what this essay is about. So more recently, the research that, the, that really sort of inspired the essay, uh, there were a number of strands to that. There's one strand in early on in COVID, um, our international research study of public procurement uh, interviewed uh, international senior public practitioners who were out there fighting the PPE, the ventilators, for, for dealing with COVID as it emerged. So we, we were interviewing them and what we uh, learned was that if you combine some of the supply chain thinking, the risk and resilience that we know about with firms, with what was going on in more humanitarian supply chain thinking and disaster management, they were thinking about preparedness and response and recovery that this is actually what was going on in public procurement. So public procurement, I see as part of supply chain management, but was taking this quite different perspective. So there was, there was that strand of research. There was then um, an online forum that a few of us, Barb Flynn, and Lisa Elrum, and Jan Kovac, uh, Joe Sarkis, uh, put on to look at an action agenda post-COVID, you know, what happens with supply chain management. And the discussion that emerged in that uh, forum really started to highlight the different perspectives of what was going on. And again, it took me back to the 1990s that we were all kind of working in supply chain management, but we were still talking about different perspectives, different things. So, it got me thinking about that again. Um, and I'd been involved in some thinking around the field of purchasing and supply management for a few years uh, before COVID. And organize, I hosted a workshop for academics just to get them around the table to talk about what do we mean by purchasing and supply management? Because we seem to be saying different things. So I'm still really thinking about this identity um, issue. And so these different strands of research really then caused me to 
step back and think about this essay. And the findings of those various strands of research led me to realize that so far, the phyto management has been focused really a lot on firm based decision making. And it's been focused on connectivity in supply chains. So a firm and what a firm can do with its suppliers, with its supplier suppliers. And they're connected by material flow, logistics, information, etc. And most of the research is for profit. And the findings that then thinking through what was happening with COVID, with the, uh, the usefulness that we found of integrating the humanitarian aid supply chain thinking and the public procurement thinking, led me then to really think through again what we the perspectives were that we're all taking. And so one of the findings from integrating those perspectives, one of the findings was that we were kind of weaving different scenes of a tapestry. As groups, we were working on these separate scenes, and that's the, the title. Uh, the discontinuous west is how you actually weave a tapestry. And we weren't really connecting those. That's why they're discontinuous. So this issue of supply chain management and commissioning these essays, I think, has given provided an opportunity for us to start to bring some of these perspectives together. So it's really been a reflection on interconnected supply chains and networks. And then how we can do research that is actually then going to be useful for the future and for practice. I, in terms of the future, I love the debate for us as academics that this has stimulated. And I'm really hoping that we could somehow come together as these different groups working on our own themes of a tapestry and have more of a dialogue about how we might be able to connect those. I do think that there are some issues to be discussed around identity of supply chain management and how that event identity is developing over time and what that might be in the future if you fully embrace supply chain management as integrating public procurement, humanitarian logistics and supply chain management, purchasing and supply management. I think there's more that we could do in the future as an academic community on supply markets. And one of the practicalities of this crisis has been that firstly, Nobody knew how much capacity there was for PPE, for ventilators. And we are struggling to understand the supply market capacity now to be able to get vaccines uh, globally. Not just vaccines, the vials that they go in, the logistics, the distribution of all of that is, is, is profound. So, Markets, supply markets is something that we don't tend to consider as much in supply chain management. We tend to look at firms and connected issues relating to firms. Interconnected issues that all come together to be an issue at the level of supply market, I think is something that we could do more on. So collectively, we could research more about interconnected phenomena as a community. So I think that's um, a kind of a wish list for us as academics. In terms of practitioners, then I really started to think through, so if each of these groups could contribute to knowledge in these areas, how might that be useful? And this multi system level 
issue that everybody is facing. I think need, that we need more clarity in practice about what are the appropriate decisions that we're going to leave for organisations and firms or local governments or state governments to deal with? What are the issues that we need to deal with at a national level? What should we be doing across nations internationally, for example, say at the EU level? And really importantly, what can we do at a global level? So I was a bit humbled when I was working on the essay by realizing that the only global operator in all of this is a virus. And a virus is one of the simplest, most dependent forms of life. And surely with the immense capability and capacity that humans have in terms of their capability of thought, direction, communication globally, surely we could do something at a global level. So for me, the future for thinking through with practitioners that we do have some global initiatives, such as the United Nations, Gary Kovac initiative for vaccines. But the UN have also proposed other initiatives that haven't yet got traction about critical supplies. So for future crises, we should be more prepared to think through uh, food supplies, healthcare generally, because these are the essentials that we all come back to within this crisis. This is going to happen again in the future. So uh, I've, I've, throughout my career, I've worked quite a lot with the UN and I'm very inspired by their view that firstly, you leave no one behind. And really, it's about that we should work together because no one is safe until we're all safe. So there are two issues there. One is about not leaving less developed nations behind. So let's not trample them in the rush for us all to have max vaccination in the wealthy countries. Let's also at the same time coordinate that response because no one is safe until we're all safe. So the, overall, it's given me an opportunity to reflect on these interconnected issues. Um, for me, there's a lot more that we could be doing as an academic community, but also then to support practice of this and the next global crisis.